Part one of this video, I ran into a problem. I was trying to use Douglas fir to turn spindles. It uh, too soft, didn't work. So this video will show how I dealt with that. And we'll start with plan B. Well, I went out to my wood shed and found a piece of white oak. It's not clear all the way down. It's got some checks in it right in here. But along this area here, I got good straight grain. Got a little bit of a curve to it, but it's pretty straight. Should turn pretty good. It's uh, kind of quarter sawn in this area. Uh, problem with using white oak is that you will get those uh, ray flex that it's known for. But uh, I think I can stain around those. Over in here, it's got checks in it. So, probably can get the wood from this area in here. That should, because I'll need to get about one, two, three, might even get four pieces across there. Looks like I just barely get into the checks right here on this end. So I'm going to mark it there and we'll cut it to length. In the first part of this series, I showed how to rip, plane, and corner round the cut parts to turn them into lathe ready parts to make the spindles. And this one I d decided instead to show you this, the steps that it takes to change over the shopsmith from a table saw to a lathe so that I could turn the pattern part and uh, get it ready to take in and compare to the balusters that are actually in the staircase to find out whether or not the details match and whether or not the dimensions are correct so that it will actually fit in. When you're turning a piece 
that needs to be straight and smooth. The conventional way to do that is take a strip of sanding paper and go down the side. I'll show you that. A couple of problems with that is that the it's slow, takes a lot of time, and the grits and the sanding paper, depending on how rough they are, and this here is a 50 grit, uh, they tend to leave marks in it, and the paper flexes as you're going across it. So trying to get it true and straight from one end to the other still leaves humps. So I've come up with a couple of other methods that I use and I'll show you those now. Okay, so I have this roughed out pretty close to the finished shape. Mind you, this is only a pattern. I'm not going to try to get it perfectly smooth because I'm going to take it over to the house and see how it compares to the ones that are in the staircase before I turn the final two. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the sander to clean this taper up along here. a little better it's not perfectly smooth uh, the sanding block here is a piece of uh, rock maple has a spring inside there that pushes the plunger out so that it maintains tension and it's sized to fit a 3 by 21 inch piece of regular uh, sandpaper for a belt sander okay I've made oh I don't know half a dozen of these and I usually keep uh, three of them loaded with uh, fairly good uh, sandpaper and three of them loaded with uh, uh, worn out sandpaper this is uh, a fairly new piece of sandpaper when the when the paper gets to where that it's worn in a place like this is becoming worn here on the bottom you can just push this in and then you can rotate the paper around. Like that, you just rotate it around and you get fresh paper on the bottom, okay? If you have random orbital sander, okay, you can do the same thing. You want to run it at a slower speed though because the sander is going to be spinning at the same time and you'll have better control. So we'll put this on, I'll turn it down and I'll show you how well this works to uh, smooth this out. Now where this really comes in handy is anytime you have a long flat surface and you want to make sure that it's, it's even from one end to the other. And the finer the grit you put on here, the better it will clean it up uh, in the end. But you start with fairly aggressive, this is a 60 grit, and then you work your way down. It, uh, especially doing things like rolling pins, or when you need to have a column that you're going to flute, or something like that, 
Uh, this is an exceptionally good way of truing up the surface. So I'm going to turn this on, slow it down, and then I'll uh, show you how the uh, well the sander does. <laughs> Spindle has quite a bit better taper on it now. I have a high spot in here that I still need to take out. And there's a low spot in here that I need to blend from about, oh, let's say right in here, down to here. But uh, it shapes up pretty fast, probably another three, four minutes, something like that. I could get it to where that taper is exactly perfect, okay? Just wanted to show you a couple different methods you can use to make sure that you're, you have a, a smooth, straight, flat surface after you've uh, turned it on the lathe. I took the pattern part in and took it to the staircase that needs to be repaired. And I apologize for the light that's in there. But uh, these folks had a dim light at the top of the stairs, and that's what we were dealing with. But as you can see, at the top there is a square socket that the spindle will set up into, and at the bottom there is a round hole that uh, the, a dowel or a pin will need to fit into. And there, there's the two that are missing, one there and one there. And as you can see, the finish on them is a very, very dark cherry. It appears to be red in that light. Well, I went in for a trial fitting yesterday. I took this uh, rough turned spindle in and I found out that this color here is too red. And this one here needs to be just a little bit darker. So it just needs uh, maybe two coats or I may be able to get it with one by just letting it set and nearly dry before I clean it off of there. But I got some final dimensions and I've added them to the drawing here and I realize they're upside down so I'll turn you over. And uh, I have enough meat left that I can clean up this piece and use it for a template. But you'll also notice right in here that I've added a tenon. I've decided on each end that what I'm going to do is in order to get this to fit in, I'm going to have to make it in four parts. So there'll be a six inch block on the end. It'll have a hole drilled in it. Okay. The hole will be one inch, will go all the way through because it'll have a tenon on this end. Okay. So this hole will actually come up into here. I don't know if I'll do it all the way through or if I'll just drill two holes, one way or the other. At any rate, that tenon has to be retractable. It has to come out of there in order to fit in. The top 
has to set up into the socket and the bottom has to slide into the stairway and then the tenon has to fall down into the hole. So what I'll do is I'll make this tenon basically a dowel and it will have a spring up in here in this area that'll push it back down in once I get it. So what I'll do is I'll make the hole a little bit loose by making the tenon a little bit small, put glue on it, and slide it up in when the bottom of the the baluster gets in place it should just pop right down and fall into the hole that's already drilled in the staircase i can't change what the way that is it's the only way i can figure out to get it in so there'll be the tenon which will be a piece of dowel there'll be the bottom square of the baluster which will also have a mortise in this end which i'll drill so that the tenon on the turned spindle fits into a socket or a mortise on each end okay so where i'm at now is i'm ready to start modifying the spindle and get it turned to finish size so that i can use it as a pattern for turning the other two. So I'll set you up here and uh, I'll let you watch as I uh, uh, prepare this. So, this 
This will be shortened. It's also going to be slightly smaller in diameter. Okay? This will be slightly um, smaller in diameter, and it'll be shortened, of course, cut off about here. The ball. Little shoulder down there. The cove. The shoulder. Okay. Comes up and around. And then this gets tapered all the way down to the end. Okay. Down here, we have the little detail here. This needs to be thinned down. I still have to cut it down to probably, well, you can see how much the difference is from here to here versus here to here. So it's got to go down probably a sixteenth of an inch. And then this little ball right here matches that dimensionally. Okay. And then here's the tin in here. So all I've got to do is cut this here and then sand to find a smooth surface. Smooth transition from one end to the other on this. And then I'll have my template ready and I can use the lathe duplicator to cut the two good ones. All right, progress. I'm just about ready to turn the final spindles for the staircase. I have my template part mounted, okay, in the lathe duplicator. Okay. It has its center line marked. The idea is that I'll align the center line of the stock with the center line of the part. And then whenever I turn it, this should be centered on the stock. So the way that I'll do that is a framing square on the table here, okay? Then I can take the template and move it down until it aligns with the stock. Doesn't have to be perfect. I have about an eighth of an inch or so of play at the ends. So now that it's where I think it needs to be, Let's check the end and see how they align. As you can see, the end of the stock is well within the turned end of the spindle. We'll look at the other end. And there's the end of the stock, and there's the end. Yep, right there's the end of the template piece. So now I'll button everything up, and I can uh, already have uh, rounded the corners on the stock, okay, so that they don't chip out, and I should be able just to set up the duplicator and run it down through there and turn out a couple of parts. We'll see how that goes.
I don't have it quite round yet. As you can see, there's still a flat in here. <coughs> see it along this edge here? All along this edge. But the other thing I want you to notice is that out here in the center, there's a lot more chatter than it is toward the ends. That's because the wood is flexible and the center of it tends to bounce away from the cutter. So, as I said earlier, once I get it round, I can put what's called a steady rest in the center to hold this center so that it doesn't vibrate, okay? Let me go ahead and get it round and I'll show you that. place the steady rest here around the center and uh, then we'll go ahead and do the final uh, rough turn. Today's video is sponsored by Red Dog, a man who understands my passion for Pepsi. Just as soon as I get finished with my break, I'll set you up here and uh, we'll do the final sanding on those turned spindles. Okay, well, that finishes it up. Uh, that gives me two spindles. Okay. Got two spindles that match the pattern. I'll lay one up on there so you can see it. 
They're pretty close. To the pattern. Uh, all I have left to do on it before I finish it, since they're they're cut, uh, turned, and sanded, is to uh, cut this end off here, because those uh, one-inch tenons on the end will fit down inside those blocks like that, okay, on each end. This one will set in there like that, okay? So, I'll cut that off. And then uh, I'll start uh, drilling on them blocks, getting them ready. Here's the boring setup for the ends. Uh, I have the shopsmith set up so that that I'm boring a two inch deep hole in this end of the spindle post. This end will accept a dowel and a spring and this end here will accept the tenon on the spindle itself. It'll be one inch deep on this end, two inch deep on this end. Okay. I uh, have it clamped in place so that it won't move. I uh, have a stop block over here so that all of the dimensions will be repetitive on all of them. The fence is established so that the depth will be the same on all of them and to make sure it doesn't move, I've put a brace on this side. So I uh, have a little bit more to bore on this hole and then I'll show you how these go together. Well, I'm uh, ready to assemble. So there'll be four parts in each one of these balusters, okay? I have the spindle and I have two square ends. Square ends have a one inch diameter, one inch deep hole, slip over the tenon at the top Okay, now actually that is the bottom. Okay. At the top, this one has a one inch deep hole here, a two inch deep hole on this end. Okay. It slips over the tenon. Okay, then that will be what shows. That, uh, uh, this uh, portion here is going to slip down into a square socket. Okay. The top here will have about five eighths of an inch and a half dowel that's going to have to go into a board hole one inch in diameter. So, to make that work, what I came up with is I'll take a compression spring, put it in that hole, take the dowel, push it up in there, whoops, till it is flush, and once I slide it in place, it'll pop out into the board hole and it should hold it in place. There'll be glue in the, in the hole to hold this at the top in the baluster and there'll be glue in the uh, hole that's bored in the stairway to hold it. Will it work? I don't know. Best thing I could come up with, okay? 
should pop out like that and go right in the hole. Next step, glue it up. Okay? Once it's glued, I'll put the finish on it. So here is the glue setup, okay? First of all, I've got clamps pulling it lengthwise from end to end. I've got a set of Bessies on there. Then I have some woodworking clamps that hold them down flat on the table, okay? Have one of those on each end. Then I have a straight edge here that's clamped to the table that runs between them so that, that it will allow me to pull them together with another woodworking clamp here so that this will be exactly straight all the way through, okay? One on each end. Don't have to hold anything in the middle. Did pretty good. I've got just a little bit of squeeze out don't know if you can see it or not, right down in there. I'll wait till that sets up here in about, oh, 20, 30 minutes, and I'll pick that out of there. Probably will have to take a little piece of uh, string sand paper and uh, get down in there and give that a little buffing so that it'll take stain. But all in all, they're glued. See how they come out in the morning. Thanks for sticking with me on this one. We've made some progress. Have the uh, spindles completed, glued together, ready to uh, put some stain on them, then we'll clear coat them, and finally we'll install them. This video's getting awful long though, and I'm just gonna end it here. And uh, I have the uh, third one just about put together. It'll be the last one ready to uh, post. And uh, we'll see whether or not this idea works. Thanks for watching.